Hi Pat. Hello Julia. You are an Italian American artist. We can say the perfect connection between Italy and the United States. And with your music you have created an ideal bridge between the two countries. Could you give me a little background of your life? I was raised by my mother. Um, my mother's parents were uh, from Modugno, uh, province of Bari. I grew up in two areas in Chicago on the south side that were predominantly Italian. Um, Italian was the second language spoken on the street. Our stores were, we had Sarli's Butcher Shop, Casio's Supermarket, and uh, it was kind of an, Ital an Italian enclave or ghetto. Most of the people were working class people. Um, and so when I went into the military at 17 years old, I had issues with the police and uh, a judge gave me a choice to go to the military or to jail and it was a pretty easy decision. But when I went into the military, I ended up in Texas, Idaho, um, Colorado, and I really felt like I didn't know where I was at because it was so different from the neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, and I realized at that point that actually I hadn't grown up in the United States, but I grew up in a working class neighborhood which was predominantly Italian on the south side of Chicago. So there was this incredible uh, connection between uh, my grandfather in Italy who came to the United States, the dream of singing lyric opera. Uh, I remember when I was a, a little boy uh, holding his hand and he would sing in bars sometimes, you know, and uh, um, I have this incredible connection uh, for Italy, um, always have. Um, and, and now that in the United States, there really aren't that many Italians left. And I realized that I wanted my children um, to be Italian and to have that culture and that possibility that I had, which for me was very Catholic, surrounded by the saints and novenas and uh, great food and um, wonderful people who were willing to sacrifice for each other because they were all trying to move up the ladder by themselves. Um, so it, 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 uh, it was a great thing. And um, my grandfather, I guess maybe I got the idea of uh, music from him. Of course, I sing blues and rock. Uh, all of my songs are stories. I think I have about 11 of them or 12 of them that are in, in Italian. It's very difficult for me to sing in Italian, to be quite honest, and to memorize the words. Um, but uh, I feel very proud to be an American. And I feel very proud to live in Italy and uh, be an Italian-American. Um, I only have one passport. I'm an American. Uh, I have an American passport. And um, I really believe that Italian-Americans are this, this group of people who lived from 19, I don't know, 30 maybe to 2000, you know, will never live again. And I feel like a dinosaur, actually. So, uh, there's not many Italian-Americans left because the children and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren are really no longer Italian-Americans. Your Italian is excellent anyway. So you are so lucky you have really to learn this so well and you are now in Italy and you can be so independent with your skills. So how was the idea of uh, Orphan's Dream Band? Uh, orphans uh, refers to um, rare disease. In the United States, rare diseases are called orphan disease because they're orphaned by the big pharmaceutical companies. I have a son with an orphan disease, thalassemia. He was diagnosed in 1992. I started the first company in 1993. Um, and today, our company, uh, which we're changing the name to San Rocco Therapeutics, is in the top two companies in the world for gene therapy. Uh, cure for thalassemia and its cousin disease, sickle cell anemia. During the whole ride, um, um, I started helping out other people with orphan diseases. Um, they would call us from all over the world and we would be able to hook them up with centers of excellence, let them know the clinical trials that were going on, the results of the clinical trials. 
very often we would try to hook them up with specialists in their areas. Um, and uh, music became so important for me um, because uh, I, I didn't graduate from high school and I was spending my life uh, with researchers and doctors and lawyers and high-powered businessmen. And uh, the music kind of, like some men like to play golf or tennis, I, uh, I like writing music, singing songs, etc. The Orphan Dream Band today, who was with us, Enzo Matera, um, Sergio Langella, Alessio Santoro, and Marco Abatista are just a small part of the Orphan Band. Uh, we have probably 80 artists who have sung with me together. I mean, uh, the ultimate blues concept band in Chicago opened for Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, Coco Taylor, I was on the stage with her. Uh, there's pictures of me on the stage with Pooh. I opened up uh, uh, a concert for Renzo Arbor in, in the United States. So the Orphan Dream Band is anyone that plays with me in the end. Uh, and it's all about uh, the glue that holds things together. Um, for our research, our company that deals in uh, rare disease. Could you summarize the mission of the foundation with a few key words? The foundation, when someone reaches us, we are able in a quick time, usually 48 hours, to let them know the centers of excellence for their disease the experts in the field that are close to them, the clinical trials, and how the clinical trials are going. What are the communication channels used by the Orphan's Dream Foundation to reach patients and increase their knowledge? Family members try the traditional roads, and when the roads don't end up leading them to a the solution that they would like, they're desperate. Yeah. And they reach out for a guy like me. Now there's been, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 articles over the last 20 years about my work in the orphan disease, my work in music, etc. And uh, the people find me and they'll write to me and the first thing I ask them to do is to send me the, the documentation of the disease and uh, the state of it. And, of course, I'm not a doctor. I didn't graduate from high school. Uh, but what I'm able to do is then connect the people together. Okay. What are the actions implemented by the Your Foundation to attract financial resources? Uh, my foundation doesn't look for money whatsoever. We never take money from any patient. Um, so it's basically supported by me, myself, or my, my family, my friends. Um, you know, we've helped people get translators in China. Um, we had a wonderful case where a woman from Romania, uh, her son, they gave him a year to live. Uh, he had G6PD. We hooked, we translated all her documents into Italian, got him to a wonderful Italian professor, Lucio Luzzato. And <clears throat> it's the best ending that we ever had. Mm -hmm. It was a misdiagnosis. So we don't, we don't look for money, we don't, we don't take money. I mean, taking $100 or $200 or $500 or $20 or $10, and very often people offer, um, it, it's just, it's not worth it. It doesn't, it just doesn't do a lot. And um, I'd rather uh, keep it nice and clean. I mean, I, I was good friends with Susan Agnelli. I have a photo with her, she's, she's doing my tie. Actually, it was in 2001 in Chicago when the uh, telethon um, went to Miami, New York, and Chicago. And uh, a great lady. I just really loved her. And I'll never forget, <laughs> she was complaining on the last day about something, about how things had gone. Not in Chicago, because they went well in Chicago, because I was there. And I said, Susanna, but do you have something, too, to say bad about me? She goes, oh, no, no. You're un pazzo, tu sei un pazzo completo. <laughs> and so whenever I would write to Susanna, I would say, you're pazzo completo. Completely mad. Right, completely mad. mad. Right. right. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so my point is we don't ask for money from anyone. Um, 
I don't really suggest people give money to not-for-profits, to be quite honest, because I don't have a lot of trust in most of them. Uh, I love St. Jude in the United States um, because they don't really spend any money. They don't spend any money on advertising. Well, they, they are actually a no children pays for any medicine, um, and I find their organization to be very frugal with their money. I'll, let's put it that way. But actually, those are really the only ones that I will ask to tell people I think they should give money to. In your opinion, can the power of music has a, a universal language capable of touching souls and uniting people, bring a glimmer of op optimism and hope to the lives of patients as well? That's an interesting question. The power of music to cure. Yes. So, I guess we all know that music really cures. I mean, how many times has our heart been broken by lost girlfriend, lost boyfriend, lost parent? And somehow, some way, music really can help us. A lot of my music is very sardonic, is very um, sarcastic. I speak about different hospital systems, etc., etc. Um, I think music is. Um, for the most part, greatly enjoyed by the youth, of course by elder people as well, um, but I always um, put a lot of faith and hope in the youth, and I think that uh, they and music um, can certainly uh, be used in a, a good way to help people. Um, the direct correlation. My music is directly correlated to problems of rare diseases. I don't know many people that are doing that, but there are, I'm sure, a lot of people out there, but I do believe that music, of course, I mean, it goes without saying, is, uh, you know, the best medicine for so many things. A lot better than pills, that's for sure. I don't know if I answered yes. your question, but... I completely agree, yes. That's the question, and that's a great answer. Pat. We will meet again in Italy, or maybe in America, I don't know, in America, when I can come to visit you there, maybe. Um, so we will talk about, about the results of your foundation, your results. Um, I want to discover more. We will have the chance to, okay. Yes, I mean, uh, I'm in Italy or in the United States. I mean, I've been to Tanzania recently as well. They have 11,000 births of sickle cell disease, and uh, we're trying to uh, see if there's some way to collaborate with the government there. But yes, I would love to see you in Italy or the United States and speak more about our project. Yes. And um, because, you know, in the end, my project only works for one reason, and that's because I have so many good people around me that help me. Yeah. And. Uh, um, I actually, I mean, I'll bring this up, it's kind of funny, but um, uh, Skyhorse, which is an American publishing house, they just published Woody Allen's book, are publishing my book, and my book is called The Flight of the Rondone. Wow. And the Rondone are the birds oh, that come, yes, I read that you have about to pick that. them up and throw them into yes. the air because they can't land on the ground yeah. because they can't take off. Yes. And so I say that so many times in my life, it was wonderful people yes. that kind of picked me up and helped throw yes. me off when I was down on That's the ground. That's beautiful. I read about that in an article and I was uh, so touched by this. So Rondone, I didn't know about this and, and I discovered that you need someone who will that's helps right. you to raise again and <laughs> so, fly. So a nice person like yourself, I'm sure, believe me, uh, uh, the support is incredible and people are wonderful. Uh, yeah. And so, yes, love to meet again in the United States or in uh, Italy and yeah. speak more about the So, project. you know, my blog is about human connection. So we are just talking about human connection. So thank you for this interview, Pat, and we will see you again very soon. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Dedico questa canzone a Luca e Giulia. I did my best to patch you on the Orphan Dream Band. <laughs>